Bon la cal, my garden of roses. Let's talk about a subject I'm sure no one wants to hear about. Oxfam. Now, Oxfam is a commission of 19 charitable organizations operating out of the UK and providing aid, and I put that in enormous quotes, to nations including Haiti and South Sudan, and has had a long history of exploitation and sexual abuse. But until now, it has mostly remained out of the public eye. Former Chairman Helen Evans expressed her extreme concern over the response, or lack therein, to the problems she brought to people's attention while heading up the charity's global efforts between 2012 and 2015, including, but not limited to, the forcing of beneficiaries to have sex with aid workers before they could get assistance. Ms. Evans had emailed Mark Goldring, chief executive of Oxfam, regarding the increasingly prevalent culture of sex abuse in places like Haiti. However, resources to address this problem and even response from the UK government was never provided. More than two years after Ms. Evans started working to expose the crimes within the Charitable Commission's international efforts, the UK's International Development Secretary states that she will not move hastily to decide whether or not to withdraw government funding for Oxfam, which totaled £31.7 billion in 2016 and 2017. Former Foreign Secretary Lord Haig warned against cutting the foreign aid budget in a brilliant show of ignoring the problem to maintain the image of moral uprightness. The discussions had by the British government and Oxfam executives over the last couple days have resulted in individuals resigning out of shame, including Deputy Chief Executive Penny Lawrence, who stated that she takes full responsibility for the alleged hiring of prostitutes with government-provided funds in Haiti, Chad, South Sudan, and many other nations. But these allegations go back as far as 2006, with executives completely aware of the problem and despite their attempts to say they did not try to cover up the prostitution and sex party allegations which led Oxfam staff being removed from Haiti in 2011 or Chad in 2006, there has been no evidence of reform or attempts to stem the decade-long problem of abuse against those the charity is posed to assist. And while many within the organization are quick to put the blame on men within the organization, Evidence shows that there is no gendered human rights violations gap, with women alongside men being accused of demanding sex for aid, and the former UN emergencies officials Andrew McLeod, Andrew McLeod, excuse me, says that these staffers could possibly face charges within the UK under sex tourism laws, charges I think a bit too lenient for the crimes committed. But these crimes are not merely limited to solicitation and the exploitation of adults, as exposed by former International Development Secretary Priti Patel. The organizations under Oxfam umbre Oxfam's umbrella have allowed predatory pedophiles to operate unchecked as they exploit the aid sector to target children in the third world. Much like the problems seen within the Clinton Foundation's funding of Laura Silsby and the New Life Children's Refuge, a known child trafficking racket which kidnapped and sold children out of Haiti following the earthquake crisis in 2011. Oxfam appears to be rife with disturbing numbers of pedophiles and criminals who take advantage of the guise of aid worker to exploit those in need of the most help. Oxfam has recorded 87 incidents of child exploitation and pedophilia in the last year alone, of which they referred 53 to the police, with 31 incidents connected to Save the Children specifically, only 10 of those having been reported to police and civil authorities. In an informal survey of aid workers across the world, between 11 and 15 percent have reported witnessing or experiencing sexual assault, which leaves one to wonder just how many incidents haven't gone reported. This is a situation that needs to be seen and heard by everyone, because it seems like every time there is a crisis of pedophiles and fucking monsters attacking people and exploiting people in the third world, 
it maybe gets a little bit of headline attention, but never, you know, front page news, never front and center information, and usually filled to the brim with excuses made by the government as to why they're not going to change anything while the situation grows worse and worse. This is not a new problem for Oxfam, nor is it a new problem for any of the major charitable, major, major international charitable organizations like the Clinton Foundation, like the American Red Cross. This is not new. This has been going on for more than a decade, more than decades in some cases. And it just continually gets swept under the rug as too ugly of a story. Well, I'm sorry, it's too ugly of a story to ignore. And with so many people, including, you know, former, former secretaries in the UK coming out and saying, well, this is bad, but we shouldn't cut their funding. We should, you know, never addressing that anything should be done just saying that we shouldn't cut funding is absolutely abhorrent. <laughs> now, I mean, many of us are completely aware of just how corrupt the British government can be in some cases with regards to this. There is a long history in the UK of fighting off accusations of sexual assault and pedophilia going back to the early 70s when those charges began coming out. But people tend to, you know, ignore and forget in light of these people having so much power. And I highly doubt that these people would get away with it if news outlets, if common people like me and you were willing to speak up and say, look, quit this shit. I don't care how little money there is in advertising or talking about this. I don't care if I'm going to be demonetized or de or uh, taken out of the recommended feed or what the fuck ever. This needs to be addressed. And this absolutely needs to be addressed. Because the Clinton Foundation was able to get away pretty much scot-free with funding child traffickers and pedophiles in Haiti. And now we're finding out that the same thing has been done with Oxfam. And they're going to continue getting tens of billions of pounds a year to provide shelter for pedophiles and rapists in the third world. And not just men, mind you, women as well. There are reports in many locations about women having been just as culpable and guilty of these crimes as men. Of course, there's no, you know, there's no advertising budget for that, whereas there's a ton of advertising budget for condemning men right now. But it's not just men. As I said before, there is no gendered human rights violators gap. So please, if you share any video of mine, share this one. Make sure people are aware that these enormous charitable organizations, which take billions of dollars a year from their governments, are accomplishing far less than you think, and instead using that money to pay the incomes of rapists, pedophiles, fucking monsters, who are traveling to the third world, wearing, you know, an outfit that says, I'm here to help, and then taking off that outfit to help themselves to children. I've disgusted myself. I'll catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.